on this computer. Hello, uh, welcome to another Package Manager's Weekly Sync. Uh, I am Aching Brain. I am your host for the game of what we did last week, what we're doing this week, and what we're blocked by. Uh, can I get a volunteer for a note to be a note taker, please? I can take notes. Thanks, Jim. You beat me to it. Great. Cool. So uh, we'll go around the room uh, and do the updates. So I'll go first. So uh, last week, um, there are a whole bunch of outstanding comments on the MPL and IPFS blog post that's been uh, brewing for a little while. So I went through and addressed all of them. Um, I currently tried to play with MPL on, on IPFS and found uh, you had know, some problems with it, uh, reliability wise. Um, I think he came across an issue that I found while I was on holiday, uh, which I've now fixed, which is about how uh, how we construct uh, hamp shards and how they, the structure of them changes over time as we edit them. Uh, so yeah, I opened an issue and I have fixed it. And once it's merged, I'm going to redeploy everything. And hopefully that should, should stop some of the weirdness. Uh, I was also doing a bunch of interviews this week. And that's it. So next week, I am going to uh, pick up my, well, I'll start to pick up my OKR stuff, which is basically implementing the DAGO API uh, for JSIPFS, but not strictly package managers related. Um, but that's likely going to be me. Does anyone have any questions? Great. Uh, Andrew, over to you. Hello. Um... So I've had a fun week. Uh, I have, uh, oh, I might as well just go down the list um, that I put in the crit pad. Um, so I did a bit of a follow up to um, the list of categories by implementation that I posted last week with some kind of grouping of ways that IPFS can like put out some kind of implementation to match with each kind of categorization uh, or potentially multiple different kinds of implementation, depending on how uh, involved or how much we can get other people on board with, um, which should kind of lead on to like, well, uh, are any of these things even possible or like, do we have ways for each, for any particular package manager to be able to do some of those things? Um, I also posted an issue just starting the conversation about um, publicizing the package managers working group um, and making the either the repo or starting a, a fresh repo open source so that we can kind of have a bit of a spotlight for package maintainers to come and uh, like give feedback and learn things and contribute directly rather than having to kind of have this like public conversations and private conversations um, because everything that we're doing at the moment, I think is, is fine to be public. Um, I sort of wrote up uh, kind of a, a absolute laundry list of every possible problem I could think of that users, package uh, publishers and package manager maintainers might have with package managers. I'm sure there's things that are missing in it, but I thought it was a good way to uh, to kind of look at the problem from the opposite direction. So rather than going like, oh, well, what can we, what's good about IPFS that we can bring to package management is to go, well, what problems does package management have? And what's the overlap of uh, IPFS features and or benefits that can apply? And then there's a whole host of prioritization that can be done to kind of go like, well, there's things here that really help. And there's th things here that are low hanging fruit that can be implemented easily and there are things here that IPFS can have no impact on uh, or can just have impact by uh, by essentially kind of kickstarting conversations that then can um, lead on to other things uh, and then I actually did some sys admin -y kind of stuff which is quite outside of my uh, area of expertise but it went fairly well I attempted to set up a mirror of the latest Ubuntu apt repository, it's about 1.2 terabytes of data. Um, I've got a, a machine in Paris that is currently uh, R-syncing 
things on a regular basis. It took 12 hours to add 1.2 terabytes to IPFS offline using all of the different tricks I found on different issues and things. Um, and I basically wrote up almost like a live blog on the issue with a number of outputs of different terminal kind of stats for uh, the machine, which didn't look like it was doing like a huge amount of stuff. Like it certainly wasn't pegged on CPU or memory or disk. So uh, there's some interesting data there to be kind of plugged into, but it's all using like public mirrors. So other people will be able to run those things as well. It's not like I've done something fantastical. It's, it's should be quite a repeatable experiment, but there's definite problems that are currently blocking for at least setting up a Debian slash Ubuntu mirror. Um, when it comes to resyncing and adding and changing, uh, after the initial sync and the fact it takes like five hours plus means that you're, if you're going to be syncing a repository every six hours, you're kind of running a little bit close and you don't want to be over if the machine's a bit slow to be caught up, like doing an ad whilst another R sync kicks off, uh, because you'll end up in a situation of kind of like two different updates at the same time. Um, which might involve building something cleverer to kind of schedule those things, but probably it needs to be faster. Um, and then I thought I'd do, I also tried out the Badger uh, file store that someone suggested. That ended up taking 18 hours rather than 12 hours, um, which was really surprising. Um, but on the resync, it did have the same error, but it, uh, did everything that didn't error um, went through in less time. So that was an interesting kind of um, aside. And then I did the same thing for a much smaller repository because like, okay, well, is this, is this a problem with gigantic ones? Um, I picked the closures uh, repository, which is a Maven repository. They have an rsync, which is convenient for copying those things down. Comes to about 60 gigs, but has many, many more files in it. Uh, I think it's like, 1.6 million files or something, much smaller files, but just lots more of them. That took 18 hours as well. Um, so that's something like 20 times slower um, for the, like I assumed the, if it was based just on size, the uh, closure repository is 20 times smaller than the apt one. It maybe would take 20 times less, but it did not, it took the same amount of time. But the redo, so we've asynced in 500 new files, that took eight minutes. Um, the third time around that I ran it is 25 minutes for, and then like it continued to get faster um, on doing the, the kind of small gradual updates. So that was encouraging. Um, the closure uh, community doesn't have any kind of IPFS plugin for their package matter yet, but you could. Uh, use the gateway as a proxy to that potentially. I mean, you lose all of the benefits of doing it, um, but it was more an experiment of trying to run these file categorized a load of packages. By file um, kind of, and what problems are there blocking people from using it? my internet may be a bit rubbish. Um, and I also had a call last night with Todd Gamblin of the SPAC Panic Package Manager, uh, who works at Lawrence Livermore Lab uh, in the supercomputer uh, department. So massive, massive computers. And was he was quite interested in um, seeing how they can add IPFS in. SPAC is actually designed based off homebrew. So it actually looks a lot like homebrew. So the experiment um, that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe, um, to add IPFS support to homebrew could be easily replicated with SPAC. It's written in Python rather than Ruby, but it's uh, it has different transport supports already. So it's it's very similar. Um, and the, the thing that I found, that was the first call I've had with a package manager maintainer I had to spend a lot of time getting him up to speed on the basics of IPFS uh, and 
So that feels like I need to put together a primer or some kind of specific documentation around like here are the parts of IPFS that are relevant to you as a package manager maintainer before we talk so that you can kind of um, get people up to speed and then talk about the stuff that's specific to them rather than just let me try and explain IPFS when I don't necessarily have the best uh, working knowledge of that. Um, and I think the only other thing then I'm putting together a little presentation. There's a link in, in the crit pad, um, for an update for the project working group of some of the stuff that I've been up to over the past few weeks. Uh, so I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions for Andrew? Uh, does it, does it, oh, hands everywhere. I just wondered if you had uh, shared that information with anyone on the Go IPFS team, just your specific experiences of loading an app repository. Uh, no, not yet. It, I, there's a couple of people that got um, CC'd in the, on that thread and had commented and given some tips. And I've been um, kind of retrying with different options. Uh, there's definitely like more there. I'm just not fully aware of what's a bug and what's like expected behavior uh, at this point. Jim? So I was thinking we just totally take that test case, use, use that as a test case and throw it in there. And, uh, you know, it's a big, you know, can we break it sort of test case? But uh, that'd be perfect for getting some profiling data. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to just script that whole thing up as well is so that other people could easily spin up a mirror for their, uh, for an Ubuntu repository and have more and more people then start to actually be able to like do a full mirror along with the people that can just then pull from That, freeze um, or with their like rate update. Uh, Andrew, you froze there for for the last like thirty seconds or so. Could you repeat the answer? Uh, I'm I'm not sure if anything I said was useful. It was mostly waffling. Then. <laughs> uh, I've been keeping an eye on some of the performance reports that Andrew's been cranking out as well, and I think they're very interesting. Um, but to get to the point of extremely actionable stuff for the Go team. We'll need to turn on some more like profiling flags that will give us actually like here are the functions that have been taking a lot of time. Um, it has been really interesting to note though that we are, I don't think we're saturating the machine that Andrew's testing on like at all, not even close on CPU or disk or anything as you mentioned earlier. So that's like very interesting. Yeah, that was a pretty cheap machine as well. That was the, the cheapest one I could get. Uh, that was fairly near to me with enough disk space to, to fit a whole mirror. Plus I wasn't sure how big the .ipfs directory was gonna end up. It has actually, it was quite small. I think it was just um, 2.4 gigabytes. So it wasn't like I had to duplicate everything, which is the problem that one of the original Ubuntu community people had last year was like, oh, I need double or triple the disk space to be able to do this. Um, but some of the changes in since that has happened has made it so that the disk space isn't a problem, but uh, the time it takes to run is still the um, the critical thing there. Uh, I can also like that server is not doing anything. I can give anyone else access to it if they would like to have a play around, um, or I can just like the issue has all the scripts to be able to run it yourself on any machine without any particular. Um, setups, but it's the kind of like digital ocean style, spin up a droplet and try and run a, a mirror um, rather than try and do custom hardware or RAID configurations and see like, see if you can make the machine fit to IPFS, we should definitely be going the other way. Aiden, did you have a question? Are you muted? Yeah. Um... So just the, I, I was reading through the, the notes you took on the 
the meeting with the, the SPAC guys. Um, and I saw like there's a, there's a reference there to AFS. Um, what was it about AFS they found interesting? Because one of the things that AFS does differently is the, the user experience of it is like there's a shared name, global namespace for everyone. Um, so which most places have stayed away from, but. The reason that came up was because of uh, some of the sensitive bits of software that they deal with. They can't just give everyone access to the whole file system of everything on a supercomputer because it might be it might have copies of um, private uh, government code that will be running. So they wanted to be able to set the permissions on um, the particular files as well, which came from us talking a little bit about uh, how Unix FS doesn't keep the um, the current permissions when you write it to IPFS in the standard, like in the, the current version. Um, and there was a lot of kind of me going like, I'm not really sure. Let me go like note some things down and then ask some IPFS people. Uh, like I could talk about the package manager stuff and I am a bit lost with a lot of the um, uh, actual kind of, once you get into the details of IPFS. So this is mostly a request for like some sort of ACL kind of thing that we can use with Unix FS. Uh, it wasn't so much a request. It was more him saying like, oh, had you heard of this? Uh, like, do you, is that something that has been looked into before? And I imagined uh, that in research it had, but uh, I hadn't seen it. So I thought it would be interesting to, to ding that up there. Cool, any other questions? So I'm uh, also going up to London uh, Thursday and Friday this week to hang out with Alex and Ollie and maybe Alan if he's around, um, all in the same place. Uh, so that'll be good, some high bandwidth conversations, hopefully getting more of the kind of shake out what we can list out as ways for other working groups to to think about how they can like support some of these things or enable more stuff is there or that's super exciting and super excited for us to kind of push on that and get more of the research you guys have been doing because i know lots of the other working groups could super benefit from this information, but maybe aren't keeping as close tabs on it. Um, and so kind of, I think both getting, getting more of this information out in like small updates, but also kind of more holistically as we think about Q2 and um, the chunks of work that we should be taking on inside the Go IPFS team, the IPFS cluster team, the JS IPFS team, um, making sure that there's like a readout of like actionable, here are things that we really need to work on and improve. Like all of this insight that like adding to IPFS needs to be way faster if this is going to be usable. Um, like those sorts of insights, we should make sure they're like communicated out um, and that we have like chunks of work that we're prioritizing within these different working groups. So maybe when the crew of you guys are together on Friday prepping some sort of like readout that, um, the other working groups can consume and use in planning for Q2 would be super, super useful. And we can, you know, we can schedule an hour long presentation. We can, you know, send people things on GitHub, but um, I think we should definitely plan for uh, an output sometime in the next week or two. Good, David. Uh, following up on Molly's point, um, I think, uh, but then again, um, feel free to discard, but like having some kind of horizontal laid out tree where you have these multiple requirements, right? Like the being able to load this specific data set in less than one hour versus 12, um, being able to update the name um, in less than 10 seconds. Like it's kind of like requirements that are like, like it's not as important for the GoIPFS team to understand exactly what the package managers are doing. It is important for the GoIPFS team and just IPFS team to understand what are the, the, the expectations from these use cases. 
things that they can control very well, things that they can benchmark for, things that they can test for, etc. And, and the reason why I'm saying like this horizontal tree because you can think of as kind of like boxes get checked, you kind of like meet new milestones and these milestones might be, uh, okay, now with this milestone, we are able to provide what, I don't know, the Ubuntu package manager or NPM needs, right? And if we have more features coming in, and so individually the features might not like make much sense, but like if they are grouped together by, by kind of like use, package manager by package manager, then it, it is more obvious how to prioritize because a group might prioritize like three features which will enable like the NPM use case to be like complete. Um, and then later see, oh, what is the next feature that I can do to support even more package managers? Like that supports the most, the, 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 the next series of package managers. Uh, so like having some kind of like way to visualize this, uh, uh, that can be entertaining, that can be fun, that can be like motivating, like th that you see that you're making progress, um, would be a really great output to then inform the working groups. Um, and again, like I think even like other than, even before the visual, the most important thing is this list of requirements. Like what do these groups, working groups need to achieve in order for you to be able to then go to the, to the package management ecosystem and say, we are ready, We're like, go for it. Like, try, try it out um, without fearing that they might fall on the ground the, at the first run. Yeah, so Andrew's prepared this list of uh, like challenges that, that people will face, uh, which is great because when we can group them by the kind of package managers that we're trying to target and then that will create a kind of a structure to have that kind of output for the working groups. I think primarily the thing is it's got to be faster than HTTP. Uh, the one thing that I've definitely found, uh, especially over kind of the past week has the documentation really needs to be leveled up as well. Um, which is, I, I couldn't find exactly, I don't think there is a documentation working group. It's more like it's, each group has a documentation element to it, uh, but trying to get and trying to like transpose that over to someone else, be like, here's all of the different pieces that you should care about in relation to making this work is currently takes like days to be able to load everything into your brain to be able to like go, ah, oh, okay, I understand this universe enough now to be, to see how I can, how I can model or how I can work around the particular restrictions that are in place. Um, and like I, I want personally to to like have a summary that I can then send out to all package manager maintainers to be like, here's the particular bits that are restrictions that you would usually not uh like that you wouldn't have in a traditional package manager registry. Totally feel you, Andrew. Uh actually like most of my conversations with external users nowadays is them telling me that IPFS doesn't do, do X and, and my face is saying, no, it does, it does. It's just not the comment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and, and what I would suggest there is definitely we need to improve documentation in something that the project working group has as part of its roadmap to like really tackle this year. And not only like improve the documentation once, but actually like what we want to do is create a support structure to keep improving the documentation over time. Um, something that like it has been unclear where it, that responsibility lands, but like, yeah, we will get there. My recommendation to support these um, use cases and this work is, is really drive it by blog posts. Like people will not have the time to read every single IPF spec. They will not have the time to read, uh, to like see every single YouTube video, uh, even if we index them all. And even if we like rewrote the documentation, it would just like be too large. But like writing some like five to 10 blog posts that like break it down about how the package managers can adopt IPFS and like basically answering their questions, right? Um, and you, as you're collecting your, their, their questions, you can ask their questions to us. We can give you an update on like if there's a solution or not, or is that a plan or not? And then we can compile this into a blog post that then can be a reference point for those conversations in the future. I agree with that. I think um, there's, there's opportunity here to, it's kind of like, um, it's the lens of how do these things work together for these sorts of, of use cases and um, like the, the metadata that 
should and ideally would live in documentation, but um, can be really targeted for a specific audience in, in kind of like these how-to guides. And actually a lot of these aren't even documentation we maintain all the time. There, there are like infura, like step-by-step -step documentation that sometimes are like confusing to people and don't have all of the right information. So to the extent that we can create kind of canonical guides on how to do these things. Um, yes, we should go and update documentation when we find that it is confusing people and we should be better about that. But I think also just uh, plan to produce more kind of tutorial style guides for people to do things in the package manager space in particular. Yeah. So I, I, oh, sorry, Alex. You want to go? I was going to say that in general, the onboarding is pretty hard because there are a lot of uh, concepts. So like everyone, everyone will benefit from better oh, documentation. Yeah, I found uh, a number of Medium posts that were, I don't believe they were written by IPFS people, that were like some of the best ways of going like, here is why this is a thing uh, and like here's how to like solve this problem or to turn that into something that then you can map to your previous experience. Cool, we have three minutes left. Um, is there any other business? Um, can you give an update on the blog post about NK Manapifes, given that we are touching the, the subject? Oh, if you turned off on time, you would have you would have heard it. Um, so I uh, yeah, I went through the comments um, and addressed them. Uh, uh, I think Arkady had some extra points, post comments addressing. So yeah, when people stop commenting. Oh. I'm Got it. Um, okay, so does that mean that like we should review it again? Um, uh, yes, I haven't, yes. I haven't been recently, so yeah, please do. Please do. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to a close then, and we can all uh, grab a coffee before the Microfest weekly sync. Thank you very much for attending. I will see you all next week. Thank you. <laughs>